Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can uh, create an adaptive learning path using interactive scenarios. So I've got a very simple uh, scenario here that I'm going to show you first and then we'll dive under the hood. But again, as with the last adaptive video, you can make this as complex as you'd like. Um, it's just really um, how big you want to make your branching scenarios. Now let's preview this scene <clears throat> and I'll show you a couple of uh, different outcomes. So here we've got our Mischief Management Tuxedo Cat Edition. You've adopted a Tuxedo Cat, Louie. He is a master of chaos, you're unaware. You're learning how to rein in that chaos, but you haven't learned any everything just yet. So um, let's go to our first decision. So we're gonna refill our coffee. We find Lou on the floor, tummy up. What does this behavior mean? So first I'm going to select some of the uh, less desirable behaviors. Uh, so obviously he wants his tummy rubbed. All right, we start giving Lou a tummy rub. He kicks you with his back feet. What does this mean? Uh, I think he wants to have his tummy rubbed still. So we're gonna select that. Obviously this was a trap. So you didn't read his body language correctly. So this is the, the like uh, bad outcome. We have three different outcomes, right? And so let's go back to decision one and we're gonna say he wants to eat, which is like the mid. And then we're also going to say maybe start petting his head. Oh, well, you almost got it. You're not, you're, you're learning, but you're not quite uh, a Jedi in um, tuxedo cat behavior just yet. So let's go to the desirable. He's just relaxing. Stop petting. You know your stuff. Okay. So you can see that there's, uh, based on your decision selections, you uh, get very different outcomes. And when you combine um, your decisions, then you're likely going to get um, you don't know your stuff or you, uh, you're almost there. Now, there's only really one true correct one, which is um, he's just relaxing and stop petting. So that's the only combination that you're going to get a correct result from. All right, so let's look at how we program this. So we're gonna go into our working file. We've got <clears throat> our scenario kind of set up. So we've got our splash, our intro, and our decision points, as well as uh, the slides for the various uh, behaviors. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up some numeric variables. So we're gonna go into manage project variables. We're going to create a new variable and we're going to label one variable decision one, and it's a number variable and the default value is going to be zero. Great. And then we're going to go and create a second one for decision two with a default value of zero. Great, so we have our number variable set up. Now we can click okay. So then on the decision one slide, we need to create a trigger for each of the buttons. So we're gonna select the button um, and basically each of these buttons is going to set a numeric value. So button one is going to be A value of three and so the the values are going to uh, increase numerically with risk so this is a risky behavior so it's going to be a three value when the user clicks tummy rub and then we're also going to create a trigger that will jump to the next slide when the user clicks tummy rub so basically there's a decision and then there's a jump to and so the decision, um, we the only important thing here is that we want the set decision trigger to be the top trigger. So if it's down here, you want to bring it up, up ahead of the jump to next, because if it jumps to the next slide, it's not going to 
uh, set the value. It's going to jump first because the triggers execute in uh, top down. Yeah, my dog is sneezing. Um, all right, and so we have the two triggers here, and then we're going to do that uh, with the next uh, two buttons as well. And so they're they're going to, for simplicity of explaining this, they're going to decrease in risk. Um, so I'm going to copy that first set trigger, and I'm going to set decision one to a value of two when the user clicks eat, and then I'm going to uh, copy the jump to, and I'm going to paste it. So it's jump to next slide when the user clicks eat, and then we will do the same with the less risky. So when they click relaxing, it's a value of one, and then we get our jump to trigger. Paste. Great. So we have all of our triggers set up for decision one. Now we're gonna to go to decision two. So again, it's going to um, decrease in risk values, but we need to do the same thing. So we're going to set decision two equal to a value of do, 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 three when the user clicks keep pet. And then we're going to do a jump to, but this won't be jumping to the next slide. This is going to jump to the specific slide based on the behavior. So we're going to jump to slide 3.5, which is the risky response when the user clicks keep petting. And then we need to add a condition. So we're going to say if decision one is equal to a value of three and decision two is equal to a value of three. So that's basically saying if they chose both of the risky behaviors, then they're going to get to the risky slot. All right. And so then we need to do the same thing for our next one. So I'm copying my set decision two, I'm changing it to a numeric value of two. Then we're doing our jump to slide, which is going to go to 3.8, which is less tuxedo behavior. When the user clicks head, and then our if statement is going to be if decision one is less than, so click your equal sign, is less than or equal to do, 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 three, the riskiest behavior, and if decision two is equal to a value of two or decision two is equal to a value of one. And so you'll see when you add that second if statement, you need to, it'll default to and, you need to change that to or. Okay, great. So then we're going to copy our set decision, click our least risky behavior, set decision two to a value of one, and then we're going to create our last jump to. So here we're going to jump to slide do, do, do. 3.10. You know your stuff. When the user clicks stop, if decision one is less than or equal to three, less than or equal to three, and decision one We're sorry, we're sorry. Rewind. If decision one is equal to, we have two triggers for this one. So if decision one is equal to one and decision two is equal to one, so you are safe the whole, the whole way, great. And then the second trigger that we have to create for the ideal behavior is 
jump to slide 3.8, so you didn't quite get it, when the user clicks stop, if decision one is less than or equal to, oh, less than or equal to a value of three, and decision two is equal to two, or decision two, so change your and statement to or, is equal to one. All right. And then we should have everything set up the way that we need to. So let's preview this scene. And so first we'll do the riskiest behavior, then we'll do the least risky, and then we'll do our, uh, sorry, the mid risk, and then we'll do the least risky. So first, obviously he wants a tummy rub, keep tummy rubbing, we got our, it's a trap. Let's go back. So he wants to eat, start petting his head. You almost got it. And then our third option should go to the ideal outcome. So we're gonna choose stop petting, you know your stuff. So it's a little complicated because you, you start getting kind of involved with uh, variables, but um, it's really quite simple once you start uh, building it out. I would recommend that if you have a large branching scenario, you are going to, um, I would recommend that you just kind of like map out all of your branching so that you don't get bogged down and try to make your variables as uh, simple as possible. So for me, it was, you know, one is the least risky, three is the most risky, that made the most sense for this. Um, but you could also do it with probably um, like true false variables if you wanted to, um, or a, a text value even. Um, however you wanna do it, um, I would just recommend that you make it as easy as possible for yourself.